Good morning, boys and girls. Today we are going to be talking about how does cause and effect relate to sequencing? So yesterday we read about those animals and the different causes and effects. For example, because people are hunting animals, the effect is that they become endangered. Today we're going to take that cause and effect relationship and we're going to talk about something new called sequencing. So I'm first going to review our cause and effect, then I'm going to show you an example of sequencing. And then as we go through those examples, we're going to read a story called How Does Milk Go to Ice Cream? And I'll show you a sequencing relationship in real life during this reading. So let's begin. Just a reminder from yesterday, um, we talked about cause and effect, and that cause is why something happens, and an effect is what happened. So for example, the cause of rain, because it's raining, we need an umbrella. So the cause is the rain, the effect is needing an umbrella. So our example today, I'm going to go through kind of like a chain of events. So you're going to see a lot of causes and effects. Um, and I'm going to do a couple different examples and then we'll talk about them. So for example, because it was so sunny out, the effect was I was sweating. Because I was sweating, the effect is I wanted some ice cream. Because I ate ice cream, I became really full. Because I was really full, I didn't want to eat my dinner. Because I didn't want to eat my dinner, my parents were mad at me. And so I just made a sequence of events. So you can see it being sunny led to me being warm, led to me eating ice cream, which led to me being full, which led my parents to being mad at me for not eating dinner. And that's what we call, this little thing right here is called a sequence of events or a sequence. It's when a cause and effect becomes kind of like a chain of events. And you can see one cause makes all of these effects and they kind of have to go in order to be a sequence of events. So today we're going to be looking at a sequence of events in a nonfiction title called From Milk to Ice Cream. So at the bottom of our screen before we start, you're going to see each page will have a little picture so that you can see our sequence of events come to life. So let's begin. Farmer milks cows. Ice cream starts as milk. A farmer uses a machine to milk cows. The milk flows through tubes to a tank. The tank cools the milk and trucks take the cold milk to an ice cream factory. So my image that I selected was a cow because the farmers are milking cows. The milk becomes mix. Factory workers put the milk into a vat. You can see the picture showing you some vats. The vat looks like a huge cooking pot. Workers stir in sugar to make the milk sweet. Together, milk and sugar make ice cream mix. So my image is going to be some sugar and things getting mixed, and you can see cow milk leads to it getting mixed. The mix is heated up. Ice cream mix must get hot before it gets cold. Heating a mix, heating the mix kills germs. Germs can make people sick. A machine heats the mix to make it safe to eat. Then the mix is cooled. So I went from getting cow's milk to adding ingredients to heating it up. So far we have three events in our sequence of events. A worker adds flavors. Pipes carry the milk to a new vat. A worker adds flavors to make the mix taste good. This worker is making pineapple ice cream. So our sequence of events now has four items. Getting the milk, adding in sugar to make it sweet, heating it up, and then adding flavors in. Then the milk is stirred. A blade stirs the flavors into the mix. Chocolate turns the mix brown like chocolate milk. Strawberry turns it pink. So we went from milk to adding sugar, to heating it up, to adding yummy flavors, and now we're mixing it up. So you can see my sequence of events continue on the bottom. 
the milk gets cold, more pipes carry the mix to a freezer. This machine makes the mix colder and colder. The mix turns into soft ice cream and blades inside the freezer stir the ice cream. The blades stir in air to make the ice cream fluffy. So we went from milk to adding sugar to heating up to adding delicious flavors to stirring the mix to cooling it down. You can really see how cool it is in the picture based on the ice forming on the pipes. Then ice cream fills buckets. Empty buckets or boxes move towards another machine. The machine squirts ice cream into them. The machine in this picture can squirt chocolate and vanilla ice cream at the same time. So if you like swirly ice cream, this is the machine for you. And our new sequence is milk, then you add sugar, then you heat it up, then you add yummy flavors, then you stir it, then you cool down the mix, then you add it into buckets. Then our ice cream gets colder. The ice cream is still soft and it must freeze more to get harder. A worker puts the buckets into a very cold room. The room is so cold that a polar bear could live in it. So we had milk, we added sugar, we heated up the mixture, we added yummy flavors, stirred the mixture, cooled it down, put it into buckets, and then we cooled it down again. Then trucks take the ice cream. Workers load the ice cream into trucks. Each truck has a freezer to keep the ice cream cold. The trucks take the ice cream to the stores. So you can see I added a truck into our sequence. So I'm gonna start from here so we don't have to repeat it every time. We put it in the bucket, we cooled it down again, and now it's going on a truck. And the last step, it's time for dessert. The ice cream is ready to eat at last. How many scoops would you like? So our full sequence looks like this. We got milk from cows, we added sugar, we heated up the mixture, we added yummy flavors to the mixture, we stirred the mixture, we cooled it down, we transferred the mixture into buckets, we cooled it down again, we put it on a truck, and it got delivered so that people could eat the yummy ice cream. We're gonna review the last couple things that we've talked about to wrap up our lesson. So at the very beginning, we reviewed our cause and effect. If you have something that causes another thing, like rain causes us to get an umbrella, the rain is your cause and the getting an umbrella is the effect. But you could have a lot of kind of a domino effect, a lot of effects coming off of this one. And if you have a chain of events or a sequence of events, it would look a little bit more like this. So this is a really popular example and I love these little keywords that they have, first, next, then, after that, and finally. So this one says, there are five stages in the life cycle of a frog. First, a frog is inside an egg. Next, it becomes a tadpole. Then the tadpole grows legs. After that, it becomes a froglet. Finally, it is an adult frog. These are the stages of the frog life cycle. So today we talked about cause and effect. We wrapped that up and we tied it into the relationship of sequence of events. Make sure to answer the questions below and I'll see you guys tomorrow.